privilege and honor to have been taught my trade, which built my skilled career by the sacrifices and with the integrity of all the veterans, my supervisors, other journeymen, and fellow apprentices during my 15 years in naval ship repair. The time shared with the active duty personnel working together to keep our fleet in tip-top shape encouraged my understanding of why we are a nation with freedom and open dreams that can be reached with our own hard work. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my job shop. My name is Keith. I'll be your host and I'm in here repairing America one project at a time. Today we have several pieces. This should be all one unit here, but we have <laughs> uh, this is a cast component and uh, this is the uh, three piece section right here. There you go. Kind of the rod support. This is a backstop for a shear, a real old dog. So we're going to be doing a cast repair. And this is the broken side here and we've got to match it to that side over there. So I'm going to flip this down because we've got to start taking this apart to get the pieces that we're going to work on all by themselves. And I set this all up on blocks, but I got you zoomed in. I got this piece where it's actually going to be when we fix it. And we're going to examine the, the chunks and we're going to make a decision. And I'm going to tell you why I leave or don't use those pieces there. This is pretty greasy, so we do have to do a lot of prep work but the main thing is is we need to have that and this piece all by himself so that we can we can work that whole area a hundred percent we got to make this brazing a hundred percent connection for it to be back to the original strength this should be fairly easy I'm gonna get wrenches in here we're gonna pull off the wheel and after that wheels off of there this I got to break loose this from the, the backstop from the adjuster. And of course, this is marked as whatever it's marked at or whatever. We'll worry about timing after the fact. And we're going to measure, do some measurements here just to make sure that it's close to where it's at when we put it back together. All of these are adjust, adjustable features of this thing to start with. But we know basically where it's at. So when we put it, back together we can get it pretty close back together the same position and all of that um, so because this once this goes across here the bevel gear will be free to undo the holding screws on it and then the lead screw should be able to go down through there I grabbed a couple wrenches and a couple sockets and we got our pneumatic gun here hold your ears okay that should be Okay, that part's loose. Nice old, nice old big hex. All right, and inch and a quarter here. Okay, handle comes right off. The key came right out. Um. I think I'll go get my mallet. <clears throat> it's almost time to get some new leathers here. All right, that looks like it's gonna slide right off of there after we get some of the weight off of here. Um, I'll probably have to slide that as I tap it. All right, okay. Put that under there, get some weight under, uh, out of it. There we go. First step, went and got a 7 8 socket because that's what my. Calipers told me that that was, so I didn't have to guess it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, by the way, oh, by the way, that distance was one inch equal on both sides, so it was all right. And rotate this around, we should see the key, and right there, okay. I'm going to pull that off, then this should go this way here. We'll have to unscrew the lead screw. Because we'll have to have it off to reassemble it because the lead, the, the screw goes through the guide hole, then threads into this, then comes up here, locks it on, and when it locks on here, it has its thrust controlled right here. All right. I gotta go get something to grab the key or tap it out. So let's grab this keyway out of here. Uh, there we go. Now we should just be able to tap this out. There we go. All right, there's a couple of, there's shims right here, shim pack, so that must be where they shim it. We've got these two parts uh, disassembled, and I don't know if we'll hurt that scale, but I'm gonna get some degreaser and get the grease out of here, pressure wash it, and then uh, probably sandblast the areas all around on this piece here and the end of that piece over there. And we'll start looking at some bare metal and plan our prep for brazing got all the pieces cleaned up and I've got it clamped to the table facing up here and I'm just setting this piece on here because I'm trying to get the feel of the brake most of the time when cast snaps um, you can locate it back in place almost by the brake now you can see that this is forced out here and there's also a little tiny vertical crack right there I didn't see it until I was sandblasting from this, you know, I turned it over, I, was, I blasted this and I turned it over and I blasted the other side. Well, the pressure actually brought a little bit of moisture through uh, here from when I pressure washed it. So I could see that crack really definite. And then also too, this is bulged out. So when the machine fell over and broke this arm, that's what actually happened. I, I know I didn't state that before. Um, this this was stressed uh, and, and bent out there. However, it was it was probably broke like this, you know. So it was it uh, and actually the break is right on this cut area right here where the scale mounts to the side. It's right even with that. That's probably a stress rising area. Um, the rest of it looks pretty good now. I've got a V and prep all of this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and we saw that these three pieces go together like that. There's three breaks in one repair here, and every time you add another one, you have another surface that is a chance of failing in the past and you know in the future um, or it just brings that one more joint you have to fiddle with um, to do your repair so I think I'm gonna completely leave those pieces right out of there and I'm gonna braise up this surface right on over to here before I put this piece onto the other piece here because I'm gonna use this bore to run the rod through and ensure we have alignment while I'm brazing the other brake. So we're gonna fix this one here first and then make sure we have the shaft fit in here and then we're gonna assemble the thing with the shaft in it and the brake prepped here and braze that together. Okay, stay tuned for our next video where we'll get into the brazing. Until then, get her done.
Thank you.